I want to ask you um, about ice bars now because, you know, I have tried them and, you know, I've got a whole chapter in my, my new book that's out about my fear of the cold and how I was always just, I hated the cold as a little person. I felt like my body would always get a lot colder than others. Then I went to this Wim Hof retreat and I was able to go into the ice bars and that was fine. Um, so it was a more about, of a, it's like from a mindset perspective, but I do have to admit going into those ice bars, something happens to my feet and I feel like I'm in excruciating pain, like excruciating. And I know that you have an opinion on that. Talk to us about ice bars and women and your, what you think about that. Yeah, so I created an international shitstorm when the <laughs> clickbait on this came out. And I have to preface, it's not my opinion, it's the science, Yeah, right? So I'm looking at the science for women and understanding that I started as a thermoregulation environmental exercise physiologist. So looking at hot and cold and altitude, we know specifically that there are sex differences in thermoregulation responses, specifically we're looking at the cold. Women will vasoconstrict, and that means that their all their blood vessels significantly constrict really tightly to try to maintain a core temperature elevation. Men will vasoconstrict not as tightly and start shivering, so they can maintain their core temperature. So if we're looking at getting the health benefits of more parasympathetic activation, better metabolic control, better blood sugar, all of the things that we hear about with ice baths, for women it's 50 degrees Fahrenheit or around that 14 degree mark of Celsius. That's as cold as you need to get to garner all of the responses that men get with ice. And it stems from the sex differences in thermoregulation. If we were to go the other extreme and look at heat and heat exposure, women can get into a sauna and won't start sweating right away. Men will get in a sauna and start sweating almost immediately because women will vasodilate first. So they're trying to offload heat into the air and they don't heat up as fast because they vasodilate first and then they'll start sweating. So if you have a man and a woman that are very similar in their fitness and body composition and they both go into the sauna, a man will last maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. It's too hot. I got to get out. Woman's like 20 minutes later. Oh yeah, I'm starting to sweat. Mm -hmm. So there are significant sex differences that are known in the research. It's just the fitness world has glommed on to trends and ignored the science for women. So when I came out and said, look, here's the science. It's not just me. It's Suzanne Solberg in Denmark and these other group in um, the U.S. at Natick. We're looking specifically at these sex differences. And women don't need ice to get the responses that people think happen with cold exposure. If you've already adapted to the ice, then you've already adapted and you can still stay in the ice. But for women who are trying to go down the cold plunge journey, know that you don't have to get in ice water. You can get in that 14 to 16 degrees and still get all the benefit and not overstress the body mm. and get it such a sympathetic drive because your body feels like it's under extreme stress. So is it actually bad for a woman to go into like a cold ice bath that is like three degrees or something like that? Will it do anything negative? If she's never been in it before, we see that it's, it's a really strong survival response that causes such significant vasoconstriction and a stress to vagal tone that their heart rate will really, really drop in a not so great way. And initially people think that that's a good thing. Ooh, I've dropped my resting heart rate, but the resting heart rate is dropped because blood is flowing less optimally through the body, trying to prevent cold from spreading to the core, as well as telling the hypo, well, the hypothalamus is perceiving it as a survival threat. So if you have already fought through all of that and you've come out fine, then you can keep doing it. But if you're just starting your journey, start warmer. And if you really feel like you have to go to ice for some particular reason, if you're an ice swimmer or you're going to go do some cold water swimming, then yeah, you can gradually lower the temperature. But it's not ideal. And I don't know if you know 
um, any of the science around this, but I think a lot of it was sold as well on mental health. So, you know, getting into the cold, it helps with your mental health. Like when I say cold, I mean those freezing temperatures, like the three degrees. Mm -hmm. And so is that true for a woman? Well, it's a mental fortitude, right? We have the ability to compartmentalize and say, you know what, I can, I can deal with this. I can deal with this. I can bear this. And we end up being able to compartmentalize our pain. Women have a higher pain tolerance. And Mm. when we activate that, that kind of part of the amygdala of fear and pain, and we're able to dampen it, then we feel like we're getting more of a parasympathetic drive that we're able to mentally come out of it in a lot better state. But it's a pain tolerance thing. And we're talking about how are we navigating this? How are we going to compartmentalize this stress and this threat to our body? So the women's brain is really really interesting in the way it can compartmentalize and reduce the threat so that we can actually focus to get out of that situation. 